the Mets put an exclamation point on a series victory at Citizens Bank Park yesterday, leaving all the mothers not too happy. The Phillies now step outside the division, but not too far. The cross-state rival Pirates have sailed into town for a four-game get-together in South Philadelphia. Out of the east and into the central and a really cool giveaway tonight for all fans. That cap right there, thanks to the folks at Teva. It is Teva Respiratory Asthma Awareness Night and the Pittsburgh Pirates are in town to start a four-game series here in Philly. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy and Ben Davis is back with us. We get set for this four-game series. The Phillies looking for a series win after losing out to the New York Mets two games to one. They have to deal with the Pirates offense that's been struggling somewhat here in 2015. But one guy that hits the ball really well here in Philadelphia is Starling Marte. He has been a Philly killer, and he's a guy that can go line to line. He trusts himself. He knows he can go to right center. He knows he can go to center. And he knows he can go to left center. That's something that the Phillies have to be aware of. He's at a 500 slugging percentage, and that's starting to creep up. Seven home runs. He has been a Philly killer, and I'm sure they're going to make note that they don't want him to beat him tonight. It's an outstanding outfield from left field all the way over to right field. And not only is it Marte, but also you have Andrew McCutcheon, who is back on track, it seems. He's hit in 10 of his last 11 after a really slow April. Well, you could say it's really slow. I say it was terrible, and that's not <laughs> something you really expect out of a perennial MVP candidate. Andrew McCutcheon is that guy. He is getting hot. His outs are hard. So, another note that the Phillies have to make note of. All right, they'll also have to deal with a hard-throwing right-hander tonight, Garrett Cole, the National League Pitcher of the Month for the month of April, coming off his first loss. But this guy, as young as he is, he is outstanding. He's very, very good, and he knows how to pitch. Yes, he has great stuff. That always makes it easier, but he's doing it with his fastball. And the guys that can locate their fastball, that shows that they can pitch. He's got a fastball that he can ride high and strike guys out with, and he's also a guy that can throw that fastball low and hitters give up on it. When we talk about his fastball, we take a look at our T-Mobile game changer. Here are the numbers during the course of his major league career. The percentage of strikes is up. And the two-strike pitch percentage with the fastball is up as well. Yeah, it just shows that basically he can rear back and just throw it by hitters. And he's got that kind of fastball, like I said, he can throw it high. But he's also got that fastball that really planes out. What I mean by that is he throws it and it looks like it's coming out of his hand. It's going to be low. It planes out and it ends up being a strike. I relate that to kind of like a Kurt Schilling mm. or a Roger Clemens type of fastball. Well, he's a guy that the National League will have to contend with for quite some time. And the Phillies have to deal with him tonight in game one of this four game series it'll be Cole his seventh start Jerome Williams also making a seventh start he hasn't been great the last two times out though he's trying to put together an extensive outing here tonight for the Phils well the Phillies did lose two of three to the Mets but yesterday their defense was pretty good Freddie Galvis has made some wonderful plays at shortstop like that one on Bartolo Colon and how about Ben Revere playing all three outfield positions and doing it well lineups at first pitch when we return Phillies baseball
Park, hoping to get the Phillies back on track. The first of a four-game series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's ready to go. Let's take a look at the Pirates lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. It'll be Polanco on right field, followed by Neil Walker and Andrew McCutcheon. Starling Marte, the left fielder, bats cleanup. Pedro Alvarez hits fifth. Jung Ho Kong is the third baseman, and he will bat six. Jordy Mercer, seven. Chris Stewart will bat eighth at batting ninth at pitching. Is right at Garrett Cole, and they'll face Jerome Williams. Two and two with a 5.18 earned run average. All right, Ben, so his last two starts, nine and a third, 15 hits, and nine earned runs. Obviously, he hasn't gone deep in the games. The Phillies sure could use him to go deep tonight. They really, really could use that. And get off to this series to a good start if you take a look at his scouting report. Average velocity, 91.4. That has come up a little bit. Curve change in cutter. And he needs a pitch to contact, but obviously keep the ball down. Well, last year against the Pirates, he went five innings, allowed four earned runs and seven hits. That was his only appearance against them. Gregory Polanco leads it off and swings at the first pitch. It's a one-hopper to Galvis and quickly one away, dug out by Howard. Well, it's time now for our Nissan Keys to the ball game. And the keys to the ball game for me, this man always worries me, is Andrew McCutcheon. Cutch him if you can. He's been hot recently. He makes this team go, so catch him if you can and be ready for some heat. Garrett Cole will throw a lot of fastballs tonight. There is Andrew McCutcheon. We saw him in spring training. He had cut his locks. And he hasn't decided whether they're going to let him grow it back, grow, grow it back out or not. You know, Walker's the battery. Takes strike one. Walker is two for six lifetime against Jerome Williams. Pirates just finished a series with the St. Louis Cardinals, the first place St. Louis Cardinals, who are pretty much unbeatable at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. First series of the year that they lost, correct? The uh, St. Louis Cardinals? Yep. A ball, one strike, and Neil Walker's hit by a pitch. So he's bored with one man down. And here comes Andrew McCutcheon. Nothing intentional about that one. Jerome just held on to it a little too long. Walker does have two stolen bases this year, so Williams will keep an eye on him. But McCutcheon, see his numbers 223 with two homers and 14 RBIs. It's a far cry. From where his normal numbers would be at this point. He had a terrible month of April. He's picked it up recently, though. He's hit in 10 of his last 11. Saw some antics out of him yesterday. Yeah, They're lining was out. He was trying to get all the demons out. He was laying on the floor of the dugout. After he lined out to Johnny Peralta at shortstop. Next at bat, though, it seemed like it worked. He did rip a double. He had a right center. And I would not recommend laying on any dugout floor as they are vile and disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> to put it plain and simple. Right. They are cleaned every night, but you never know how much they can get up and what's still down there. No balls, two strikes to McCutcheon. <laughs> Whacks it off his leg and it remains 0 and 2. Pirates came from home. Clint Hurdle talking to Dave Joust, one of his two uh, coaches that are in the dugout. 882 career victories as a manager. Of course, led the Rockies to the World Series in 2007. Went to the postseason with the Rangers as their hitting coach after being let go by the Rockies. Swing and a miss. Got him to chase. Two outs here in the first. And that right there is making the hitter being aware of an inside pitch. He threw a couple sinkers in there. I think Kutch is looking in there again. Fouling off a ball off his foot. You're just thinking the pitcher's going to go back in there. Throws that cutter down and away at 86 miles an hour. It's a great pitch. Now with two outs, it'll bring Marte to the plate. Seven home runs, 21 runs batted in. Look at his numbers here at Citizens Bank Park. 
He's hitting over 400 here at Philadelphia. Down and away, 1 0. He's a 278 with seven home runs, 21 runs batted in. The seven home runs is tops on the Pirates. Well, it makes perfect sense. He's getting hotter. McCutcheon's getting hotter. You can no longer pitch around McCutcheon and get to him. But Jerome's got some movement here tonight on that cutter, right? It's awesome. Three in a row. Marte also pulled his head off that really well. Ball foul, one ball, two strikes. Three night games and a day game against the Pirates. Series wraps up on Thursday afternoon. Phillies will see all four or four of the five starters. The only one they won't see is Jeff Locke during this series. Thank goodness. Side two and two. Yeah, they do have trouble against Locke. Big time. C.B. Buckner is behind the plate. Lance Barrett at first, Toby Basner at second, and Dale Scott is around at third. Yeah, Jeff Locke's one of those guys just gives the Phillies hitters fits. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Back to back strikeouts for Jerome Williams. So good start for him. No runs, no hits. One man left after the hit batter. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning. It's the Phillies nothing, or Pirates nothing, and the Phillies coming up. Starting lineup for tonight, brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Ben Revere leads it off in left field, then Freddie Galvis and Chase Utley. Ryan Howard's at first base, he'll bat cleanup. Grady Sizemore bats fifth. Odubel Herrera, the center fielder, hits sixth. And the bottom third of Ashy, Ruiz, and Jerome Williams. And they'll face 24 year old right hitter Garrett Cole. This big lug is 6'4, 230 pounds. He's 4 and 1. With an earned run average of 2.27. As we mentioned, he was the National League Ben Pitcher of the Month for the month of April. And rightfully so. He is as advertised right now, and he is really, really good. As we look at the scouting report 94 to 97 with his fastball change curve slider, and he was the first overall pick in the 2011 amateur draft. Out of UCLA. And here's Ben Revere. Revere 2 for 12 in the series against the New York Mets. Takes at the knees, 0 and 1. Like a lot of pitchers, Garrett Cole is a little different uh, guy on the field and off the field. That one slapped towards shortstop. Jordy Mercer stays down on it. One away. Off the field, he's kind of calm. 
easy to get to know, easy to get to get along with. But on the field, he got a little anger to him. He pitches with a little, uh, little anger. Well, he believes that he should never get hit. Yeah. And that's a great attitude to have as a pitcher. That's what I want in my horse. Well, Clint Hurdle says he has meetings with all the starters after their start. And he said, my conversations with Garrett are usually longer than the other ones. First pitch to Freddie Galvis inside, one ball, no strikes. Tell you what, first pitch of the game, Freddie gets an in between hop off Polanco. First pitch he sees almost hits him in the, in the hip. One ball, one strike as he fouls it back. Now, why it's on my mind, Tom, is, is the way he spells his name G E R R I T. Normal for Garrett? Uh, no, I think there's usually it's usually G A. Yeah, yeah. You know the kids these days. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't have to spell it the right way. Well, that would be Garrett. Well, yeah, but I'm saying that it's this is Garrett. No, I know, but that's they both sound pretty much the same. How would you spell it? G A R R E T T. Right. But how would you, if you were to say Garrett, how would you spell I guess, it? Would you uh -huh. put two T's? I would. Okay. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Fly ball, center field. And then McCutcheon is under it. And there are two outs. Today's Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Ann Morris. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, then Ann will win $100. Good luck to you, Ann. I said she won a hundred bucks right here and you can enjoy it for the rest of the ball game. Don't threaten me with a good time. Jay Sutley hitting 116. He was two for eight in the series against the Mets. Three home runs, 14 runs batted in. Started two of the three games. Takes a pitch low, one ball, no strikes. Side three and zero. Oh. Ryan Howard waits on deck. I know we've been harping on his struggles as of pretty much since the season started, but it is it's tough to look up at that scoreboard and see point one one six. on four pitches. Well he does feel or he is hoping that what happened this past weekend with some of his swings will get him started. And it brings us to our Geico quote of the day. I'm not one to make excuses. I feel like I've swung the bat better than the numbers indicate, but I feel like I haven't swung the bat as well as I can. As a professional athlete, results build confidence. And when you don't have those results, it's hard to keep that confidence going. So as good as he has been in his career, you know, people always wonder about athletes you know how was after they're established for a long period of time do they have breakdowns in their confidence well everybody does especially in this game Howard fouls the first pitch off it's 0 and 1 it's so easy to get down on yourself because this game is built on failure the girl Yanni can hang his hat on the fact that he had RBIs Inside. And it'd also be different if you didn't see a man that just works tirelessly at his craft as Chase does. Everybody is different in how they prepare, but Chase is even more different than others. Way inside, two and one. Garrett Cole really yanking these fastballs in the left to Freddie, to the Chase. Obviously, to Ryan Howard here. 
when I say yanking, you're just basically not getting extension in your arm. You're getting to the release point and you're pulling your arm across your body. Thus the yank. And that one's pulled into right field at base hit. Utley stops at second. And the Phil's now with runners on first and second with two men down. Well, there's no doubt his swing looks better. And he's getting results over the last last few ball games. It just looks a lot quicker. A lot quicker. Like he's trusting himself more. I mean, that's kids at home. Look at his head right there. Down on the baseball. Front shoulder in, head down on the ball. Beautiful swing there. Runners on first and second. Brady Sizemore's up, and there you see what Ben's talking about. I mean, it's physically impossible to watch the bat hit the ball, but it's pretty close as you're going to get to it. Sizemore seven for his last 19 in sporadic appearances. And he pulls that one to right field a base hit. Up these around third. He's being waved home. Polanco slips and that allows Howard to go to third. And then he just tosses it into no man's land. It's one nothing Phillies here at the bottom of the first. What are the three words I'm going to say to you Tom. Two out walk. I was going to say two out hits but yeah two out walk. <laughs> It'll come back and bite you. Love the aggressiveness. Why let a guy that is a strikeout pitcher get ahead of you? Go jump on that first pitch heater. So Utley scores after the two out walk. And then a base hit by Howard and a base hit by Sizemore. Here is Odubel Herrera, 0 for his last nine. Howard over at third, Sizemore at first. Healthy swing and a foul. It's 0 and 1. Only the second first inning run allowed by Cole. That's how good he's been. First all speed pitch he's thrown. A slider there at 88. You know, as a hitter, he, it's not like you want to see that pitch in the first inning, but it does help if you get at bats later on in the game against him, knowing that you've seen it before and how to react to it. Sizemore, not a big lead off first. Pitches there. Odubel, even with his struggle, still the leader among Phillies hitters with runners in scoring position. Swing and a miss. He got him with that cutter on the inside part of the plate. And the side is retired. First strikeout for Cole. The Phillies do strike first, though, an RBI single by Grady Sizemore. They lead it one nothing.
excuse me, is Thursday when the Phillies take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's also a senior stroll. The bases afterward. You can order your tickets by going to Phillies.com. Tomorrow, the Phillies will see uh, former Philly AJ Burnett. He'll be on the mound. Wednesday, Cole Hamels will pitch for the Phils. Then Thursday, former Phil Vance Worley will be on the mound facing Aaron Horani. Pedro Alvarez takes a strike. It's 0 1. Alvarez hitting 217 with five homers and 14 RBIs. Those folks are sporting the Teva respiratory asthma awareness hats that have been given out tonight to everybody. It's always a great giveaway when everybody walks away with one. Absolutely. That one's in there. One and two to Alvarez. Hopefully Jerome can keep this going, but first inning he did it. He's commanding both sides of the plate. There's a change up, but it misses two and two. And if you can do it, you're going to have success. I don't care how good or bad, how good the lineup is. The last couple of games, they've been squaring up baseballs against him. In fact, the opponent's batting average overall against uh, Jerome is 329, which is the second highest in baseball. Surprisingly, Mark Burley has the highest batting average against. So we get a miss. Third strikeout for Williams. One away. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Well, it has been hard to figure out this uh, Pittsburgh Pirates team so far this season. I think most people believe that coming into the year, they'd be right in the mix uh, in the uh, National League Central Division again, as they have been over the past couple of years. But they have been a streaky, streaky team so far. They got out of the gate very slowly. They won just one of their first five games. And then they went on a little bit of a streak. They won 10 of their next 14. But then... Won just four of their next 12. So they've been kind of up and down. When you talk to some of the folks, which I did today uh, around the Pirates organization, they said, well, you know, a lot of it is uh, just what you think. You know, they didn't get a big hit when they needed it. They didn't get a good uh, a shutdown inning when they needed one. So it's a lot of just uh, the way baseball goes. But they do expect that this team uh, will turn things around. They're one game under 500 uh, as they come into, to, into tonight's game. And they believe they're a much better team than that. So they're hoping that things start to right themselves in Pittsburgh pretty soon, guys. Yeah, Clint Hurdle has watched, uh, and we've watched it from a distance, some of his core players mm -hmm. really struggle batting average-wise. As Kong hits one out toward right center field. Boy, this guy's been a revelation for the Pirates. He's on his way to second, and he has the first hit of the night for Pittsburgh. I mentioned McCutcheon struggled in April. Josh Harrison has been uh, nowhere near the player he was last year, where he battled for a batting title. Kung coming into this game hitting 333. And basically he's in there until he gets cold. I mean, Josh Harrison, all-star last year, signed a deal. Pretty much came out of nowhere. Struggled a little bit. Kung got an opportunity. He has been on fire. Yeah, he's a kid they signed uh, out of Korea this past offseason to a four-year deal. He's a shortstop by trade. But they have him playing third. Here's Jordy Mercer, another one of the guys who has struggled for Pittsburgh, although his numbers are excellent against the Phillies during his career. But for Mercer, that's not an oddity. He really struggled last year to start the season. Side two balls and no strikes. It does seem like when you're going well, you get good pitches to hit. I know it, it's not coincidence, but look at that pitch there by Drome up out over the plate. And when you're going good, you just seem to get those pitches. Over the inside corner, two and one. Uh, 
I don't mind that pitch there. You're thinking 2 0 guys looking dead red middle in. Well, you're not swinging the bat well like Mercer isn't. You know, it's, he's probably thinking, I'm looking for something out over the plate, hit it the other way. Great pitch by Jerome. Out in front of a changeup, and it's 2 2. Yeah, unlike his last couple starts, he's almost pitching backwards here tonight. Yeah. Mercer well out in front of that change up by Jerome. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball over to third. Cody Ashy, pants pulled up, throws over to first. Two away here in the second. And Chris Stewart will be the hitter. Chooch and Drum basically saying, you know what? We have a pitcher on deck here. Doesn't mean you just automatically go up and walk Chris Stewart. It makes him throw a pitch out there. If you happen to get ahead, you can work from there. But just don't walk him the unintentional, intentional walk. Over the heart of the plate, and it's 0 and 1. I always find, found this to be very difficult hitting in the eight hole in the National League. It was tough because you're thinking there's no way they're going to give me something to hit here. Sometimes they do. There were plenty of times when I was in that spot where I would swing at his pitch. And not swing at my pitch. Sometimes they would challenge you. It depends on the situation. And when they did challenge me, it seems like I wasn't ready for it because of thinking, oh, I'm not going to get anything to hit here. That one sits softly to shortstop. A little spinner to Freddie Galvis. And the inning is over. No runs, one hit, and one man left in scoring position. Boy, Williams has been good through the first two innings. So now we'll go to the bottom of the second inning. And you see Cody Ashy. He's going to lead things off when we come back. On Broad, presented by Virtua Joint Replacement Institute. Weekday mornings from 6 until 8 over on the Comcast Network and streaming live on breakfastonbroad.com. Well, today, John Feinstein was on, Kevin Cooney was on. Phillies lead at 1 0 as we go to the bottom of the second inning. It'll be Cody Ashey, Carlos Ruiz, and Jerome Williams to lead things off against Garrett Cole. You and I were asked about superstitions today. Yes. And 
Cody Ashey, who you know is struggling as we know his average down to 235 two home runs four RBIs he's adjusted his uniform style for tonight's ball game why not inside want to know would, hey, you, would you do that would you adjust your uniform I mean I know you I know you like to look good yeah I, I mean hey I try anything that worked why not Although I didn't think you were that superstitious a guy because you wore number 13. Yeah, I wore that because my dad wore it. I just, I liked it. Um, but I definitely have my superstitions. Definitely. Off the end of the bat, spinning toward the middle, diving, stopped by Walker, and a base hit for Cody Ash. Coming up. All right, so we don't have any superstitions up here in the booth, but we're going to use a different camera while we're up here. On the okay. It's a great shot behind this right here. Excellent. So superstitions. You know, I've talked to people that you know, even to this day, I try to park in the same parking spot if the Phillies win the night before. Do you have any? What was your biggest one as a player? Big on food. If if I ate a certain meal, right, and it worked, then I would eat the same thing the next day. Really? Yes. Very much so. Runner goes, pitches fouled away. It's 0 and 1. Could you remember the longest stretch of having the same food that you ever had? One day. <laughs> 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 no, uh, I, I mean I would. It, it depends. I, I mean, if, if I was going good, I, I probably, you know, eight to ten games maybe, where I would really get into it. And the thing is, you never really get sick of it because right. it's working. <laughs> you know, well, so it's like. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing it. Wasn't it Wade Boggs that ate a chicken sandwich chicken every, every, every day? Every day? Chicken sandwich every day? Chicken every day. Luis hits it back toward the middle off the mound. Mercer's got it. And a double play, so two outs. One one big one that I still do is I always have to go out the same door I walked in. Can you witnessed that on our recent trip down to Miami. We walked in for supper sat down outside and you walked through the gate to exit and I came back around and walked out the door I came in. You did do that. I yes, was wondering I why you did that. My Irish grandmother. Murph did you know that's why he was doing that. Oh boy. Williams hits it out towards center. McCutcheon is there. Side is retired. No runs one hit nobody left for the fills. We'll go to the third. Everybody stay in their spot. The Phillies are on top one nothing. play that had never been turned in Major League Baseball before that they did Tom and it is the uh, topic of our GMC precision play of the game but we're going to go back to Saturday to take a look at it because uh, it's worth seeing if you haven't seen it it's the 4-5-4 triple play uh, Yadier Molina line drive to Neil Walker catches it throws the third and then Kong doesn't realize that uh, yeah three outs uh, you need three and he gets it back to uh, to Neil Walker at second base once again four five Four triple play never been done before in all of Major League Baseball happened on Saturday. Pretty cool stuff. Well, we got to hear Molina's reaction. Yeah. Well, 
It'll be interesting to see if it does ever happen again. As Williams finishes up his warm up tosses. In this game of baseball. I think it will. I don't know. I mean, it's strange that something like that has never happened. Yeah. The, the combination of 4 5 4 has never happened before. Obviously, we've seen unassisted triple plays. Cole is 3 for 13 on the season, hitting 231. In there for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. I'll kind of equate that to a grand slam for a hitter. You get four RBIs for one swing. You know, for a pitcher, you get three outs for one pitch. Obviously, the grand slam happens more frequently right. than a triple play, but. Well, ball one strike to Cole. Swing and a miss, one and two. He wasn't trying to shoot that one to right, was he? No, I think he was trying to. Mimic Chad Billingsley from yesterday. Chopper back toward the middle. Freddie Galvis casually to his left. Garrett Cole casually up the first base line. One away here in the third. Not in a hurry to get down the line, was he? No, but he's, I think, mad at himself. I don't think he hurt himself. I think he's just mad at himself. And Gregory Polanco will wait for Cole before he goes to the plate. I wouldn't be so sure. I mean, he took forever to get off the field. Keep slapping that right leg, though. It, he does. Polanco hit one out toward Galvis at shortstop. One ball, no strikes. It's two balls and one strike. Polanco last 21 games hitting just over 290 for the Pirates. As a team, they're hitting 237. 10th in the league in home runs, 12th in runs scored. Outside, three and one. Do not like when the guys throw the bats away. They just don't. Low ball four. So he does walk. It's the first one issued by Williams. Time now for the Jeep Stump the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Ben, here's the question Who was the last pirate? To hit three home runs in a game. Last Pirate to hit three home runs in a game. Answer will be revealed a little later on. Neil Walker hit by a pitch his first time up. Fly ball, shallow left field. Ben Revere is there. And there are two outs. That's I don't want a, you to go. I don't want you to tough go. One. I don't want you to go too far back because I know you're probably thinking Willie Stargell. I'm thinking or, of the We Are Family bunch yeah. and don't go all the way back there. 
In fact, I'll give you another hint. Think this current team. Okay. So there you go. I gave you a window. I was going to ask, are we talking Three River Stadium? Not talking Three River Stadium. Cutchin struck out his first time up. At the knees, 0 1 1. Pitches outside, throw by Ruiz is into the runner. And it's stolen base number 10 for Polanco. Polanco had a good jump here, but that is a tough pitch to throw on. The ball's down and away, so you have to wait for that ball to get to you as a catcher. You can't jump out of there because you're not going to stay behind the ball. Your body will be out there, but your arm will drag behind. You're going to throw a sinker to second base. So you really have to make sure you stay back on that ball, get it, and then move forward. It's not like a pitch that's up that'll ride you back automatically. So one ball, one strike to McCutcheon. Outside. And now a quick conversation with Ruiz. Almost looked like Williams slipped when he delivered that last pitch. And Chuch is just giving him a breather. Maybe go over the scatter report again. I think his front foot gave out just a little bit. A little bit. Almost looked like he really landed on his heel there as well. Which you don't want to do as a pitcher. Came back, but it is ball four, so second walk of the inning. So he's now hit a batter and he's walked two in his first three innings. And he's going to have to deal with Starling Marte, who he struck out his last time up. Hey, look at his splits right now 26 strikes, 21 balls. Something that he needs to remedy. I think a lot of it, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but a lot of it's coming this inning. Yeah. Doesn't look as comfortable this inning. Like well, he's it, laboring. Yeah, it is the second time through. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe their approach is a little different against him. Off the front of the Pirates dugout, 0 and 1. See nine balls, eight strikes. No, it's the third inning, but it's humid tonight. So be trying to get his legs underneath him here. Another one nearly the same spot, and he's ahead 0 2. Current conditions tonight 76 degrees. Temperature did get into the low 80s today. Very gentle breeze, and I mean gentle. Coming out of the uh, south southeast. No balls, two strikes to Starley Marte. That hit the bat. And Marte's not even going to argue it. Is he diving on that or what? That didn't even seem like it was that far inside.
I can honestly say, Tom, I never did that as a hitter. Never hit the knob of the bat? Never once. Never once. Carlos Ruiz wanted an appeal, but Marte didn't go. I think that was the groan from the crowd was more that it wasn't called a strike. It was a close pitch. He is diving though. I'd stay in there. Till he proves that A he can keep it fair. But barrel one. I'm gonna live in there. Carlos looks like he's creeping in now out. And he fouls it off. Thinking that pitch was a changeup, but a little hard at 85. I didn't see any lateral movement. I saw more of a downward movement. Yeah, on that. just so at I'm the end. It's a change up. Yeah. What ball? Two strikes to Starling Marte. Runners on first and second. Here at the top of the third. Phils lead at one nothing on a single by Grady Sizemore. Williams working hard in this inning. And that one is ripped deep to left center field. Herrera going back, and the Pirates have the lead. A three run shot by Marte. It's his eighth of the year. That one was right where Marte was diving toward. But it's 3 1 Pittsburgh. I'll be honest here, Tom. I, I don't get the pitch. I, I don't like the curveball here. You know, you're going to your fourth best pitch. You're going to your fourth best pitch. And you can see this ball's hanging. Well, you mentioned it too. The ball is traveling. Batting practice was a clear indication of that. Now Pedro Alvarez, and Alvarez takes low. Alvarez struck out his last time up. Well, Marte does like hitting here and already now eight home runs 24 runs batted in. You know, I mean that's a crucial time in the game you have your four hole hitter up. Who has killed you. So if I'm going to get beat in that situation I don't want it to be on my fourth best pitch. To left field playable for Ben Revere. Now this should do it for the third. However, the damage is done. A three run home run by Starling Marte has given the Pirates a 3 1 lead.
That is the lovely Kristen Chenoweth, the Broadway actress and singer with a beautiful rendition of tonight's national anthem before the start of the ball game between the Phillies and the Pirates. This is Teva Respiratory Asthma Awareness Night, and Krista is here for that. Krista is here for that, and she is now with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thank you very much, Tom. And, yes, what a beautiful rendition of uh, the Star Spangled Banner uh, being uh, put, uh, sung tonight. Congratulations on that. Uh, it's second year in a row. We're very lucky here in Philadelphia. I'm very lucky because I love baseball, and I just want to call attention to the fact that this year I bedazzled my – I did notice that. I did bedazzle. She bedazzled the P on the Phils, guys. I did. <laughs> so you put some work into this. We like that. Tell us why you're here, because uh, you suffer from asthma, which is amazing. We were just talking about to be able to do what you do on a daily basis and to suffer from asthma. That's pretty remarkable. It's a tough thing. 25 million Americans have it. I didn't even know that till, till I started working with um, the Teva Foundation. But it's Ava Asthma Awareness Month, and this is the seventh year that Teva has done Asthma Night at the Phillies, and this is my second. Yep. And really just bringing awareness to the fact that if you have, you know, symptoms, go get your, go get checked out. That's what I did, and I found out I have it, and there's, there's medications to help. Yeah, and so basically you just have to, you know, be aware of it, control it, and, and be on top of it, right? Correct, correct. Like like a baseball, if, you know, if they've got a hurt elbow, they're going to go check it out. I'm a singer, you know, there are better things to have than asthma, but I'm doing it. You certainly are. Well, let's talk about what you are doing because you've been you've been keeping busy of late. Uh, you're in a, a new show on Broadway, nominated for a Tony Award. Congratulations for that. You've already won one. You're nominated for another. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. It's called On the 20th Century. It has never been revived. It was uh, originally done in 1978. It's a madcap, operatic comedy, and people are loving it. It's a it's a lovely hit up there in New York, and I just want to encourage anybody. If they get, you know, they want to take a trip, come see us. I love it. Absolutely. And uh, not only are you, do you do what you do on a daily basis, but you do love baseball. You, you, you know, you, you follow the game and, uh, you know, you love coming here to Citizens Bank Park. Well, listen, I'm going to hold out hope. It's still, the game is not over. The fat lady has not sunk. That, that is okay? correct. That is correct. And I do think that I'm wearing the stripes, so I think we know where, I, where my loyalty lies. All right. So you're ho hoping to bring us some good luck tonight, and we certainly appreciate yes, it. Yes. Well, for the second straight year, it's great to have you here, and we appreciate it. Good to see you. Good to see you, Murph. Thank All you. All right, guys, we'll send it back to you. All right, Murph, thank you very much. We appreciate that. No balls at one strike to Chase Utley. Utley walked and scored his first time up. I wonder if that the dazzling style for a Phillies uniform is going to catch on <laughs> the Majestic Clubhouse tour. It could. A ball and one strike. Oh, I got to be honest. I was not expecting that voice to come out of that little itty bitty body. I mean she's got some pipes yeah, on. Yes she does. Very versatile. One ball and two strikes. that swing there by Chase a little out in front but his balance as soon as he finished that swing his back foot was up his front front leg was firm and his balance was you could have tornado couldn't have blown him over Ooh, a late strike three call by CB Buckner back to back strikeouts for Garrett Cole Phillies go down in order we played three on to the fourth here in Philadelphia
where help is all we do. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW or visit jefferson.edu. And buy Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at chevydealer.com. Oh, look inside the Hall of Fame Club. See if you can count how many baseballs are on the wall when you walk into the Hall of Fame Club. It is one of the prettiest spots here at Citizens Bank Park. Get some grub, get a chance to turn around and enjoy the game. Jung Ho Kung will lead it off for the Pirates. One ball, no strikes to him. He doubled his last time up. Outside, 2 0. Kind of interesting when we saw the Pirates in spring training as they peel that check swing. It's 3 0. They weren't sure when Kong would make it to the major leagues. They probably anticipated it would be at some point this year. You know, we've seen a number of Japanese players make the transition very quickly. The Korean uh, Professional Baseball League is not of the level of the Japanese Professional League. So that's why folks weren't sure how long it would take him to get here. But as you said before, he's going to stay in the lineup until he stops hitting. Absolutely. And that is one exaggerated leg kick. That is long and deliberate. You really have to trust yourself, trust your hands that you're going to get your foot down and you can fire to the ball. Jordy Mercer grounded out to third. Out to left field. And ben Revere floats back. He's got some room. And there are two outs. That one was down toward the end of the bat of Jordy Mercer. 2015's Food Service Breakout Player of the Year is WB Mason, providing amazingly low prices on kitchen disposables, consumables, small wares, and so much more from your new restaurant partner. Who but WB Mason? Two outs. Chris Stewart grounded a shortstop his only time up. Just barely stays alive. Down the left field line. That'll be in for a base hit going to the corner. And ben Revere will play it off the wall. And Stewart pulls into second with only his second extra base hit of the year. Try to get it in here on Chris Stewart. It's a sinker. But it's just elevated. This is that last ball. You know, Chooch wants it in. Jerome wants it in. But the pitch is just up. Stewart credit. He pulled his hands inside and kept that ball fair. But I think if that ball's a little lower, you're going to see a different result. See Stewart having a conversation with Chase Utley out at second base as he arrived there. Here's Garrett Cole, who grounded out to short his first time up. Pops that one up foul and out of play. Two balls in one strike. Why that hurts is you get two quick outs from Kung and Mercer and you give up the double to Stewart and clear the pitcher. That one.
Collins hits sharper than the other one, and Galvis is up with it again. And Cole is thrown out. No runs, one hit, one man left in scoring position. Middle of the fourth, Phils down by two. First, hurry in today. Toyota, let's go places and buy McDonald's. Any size hot or iced coffee is just one dollar. McDonald's, ah, I'm loving it. It's turned out to be a nice night here in Philadelphia. The Phillies looking to get a little offense against Garrett Cole. They had uh, three hits through the first two innings and were retired in order in the third. So now Cole, who made the last out, has all the time he needs to warm up out on the mound. We'll face Ryan Howard, Grady Sizemore, and Odubel Herrera. Pretty nice sky up there. It's butamus. Butamus, as my grandmother would say. Butamus. <laughs> so, what'd you do with your time off, Ben, while the Phillies were uh, playing <laughs> some baseball here at Citizens Bank Park? I went to visit my folks in Estero for a couple days. And down in Florida near Fort Myers. And they came over, picked me up, came home. Um, lots of games. Lots of games. Lots of games. We had a tournament at the Cal Ripken and down in Aberdeen, which they do a phenomenal job. Beautiful down there. place. Now you were you were part of a a celebrity softball tournament. Also it depends on how you use the term celebrity, but I was a, a guest manager. Oh, so you didn't play. I did not play. Oh, okay. No, but that was on Friday. Came home and uh, then the next day my son had two games on Saturday down there. He stayed the night. And then on Mother's Day, he had three games. Welcome to the world of travel baseball, yes. Ben Davis. It's a little different than when you played. It's a lot different. Ryan Howard takes low one ball, no strikes. But it was some nice time off. But very excited to be back in the booth with you, Tom. I was uh, I, I was hoping that you played in that softball. No. Howard lifts it to shallow left center field, and McCutcheon arms out, puts it away. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widget, and more every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Here's Sizemore who singled home the Phillies run. Has to do a little moving of his own. One ball and no strikes. That ball got a piece of the home plate umpire, C.B. Buckley. Two balls, no strikes.
Sizemore with a chopper to second in their two outs. He's certainly had better swings these last 10 days. I mean, it's a credit to him because he, he hasn't played a whole lot, but he's worked hard in his downtime before pinch hitting to keep that swing at least fresh. Yeah, give him credit. I mean, he did not start off too well, but he has gotten back, you know, hit some balls, some hard line drives. But that swing there, it's tough. <laughs> it is tough as much as you tell yourself not to. You get a 2-0 count. You know what you're getting. And you just try and do too much with it. And you pull an outside pitch. Odubel Herrera fouls the first pitch back. Well, Odubel's due to make some positive contact with one of those first pitch fastballs that he's getting. His two best swings tonight have been on first pitches from Cole. And we have seen him be patient. Things start to not go as well. Hitters tend to just, I wouldn't say press the panic button, but really trying to get ahead and get those hits back. And this is a test for him. You know, he's hit everywhere he's been his entire life. But he struggled recently. I see how he responds. Swing and a miss. Struck out on a 97 mile an hour fastball. Four strikeouts for Garrett Cole. Phillies go down in order. We'll go to the fifth inning with a pretty sight of Center City. All right, Ben, here we go. Who was the last pirate to hit three home runs in a game? Well, you said recently. Yeah, recently. Recent. Recent. Pirate. I was going to go with Aramis Ramirez. Aramis Ramirez, First is that off. your answer? No. Okay. But I'm going to go with Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew McCutcheon is correct. Back on August 1st of 09 against the Nets. <laughs> Log back on the Phillies.com. Find it if you, like Ben, have the right answer. And if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Good guess. Excellent. Which one? Aramis or McCutcheon? McCutcheon. Honestly, Aramis would have been a good guess on your part, too. But McCutcheon has that ability. Walker's the batter. He has that ability too. 
Walker was hit by a pitch. He also fly to left. And when you think of a second baseman, you just don't typically think of a guy that can hit the ball out of the yard. But Neil can do it. Got two second basemen in this game that can do it. Down the left field line, and Rivera will give it a look, but it slices into foul territory. Speaking of second baseman that could do it, playing with Brett Boone in Seattle. Yeah, he could do it. That man thought he could do it every at bat. <laughs> Did he break a lot of bat racks? <laughs> break a lot of bats back in the dugout? He snapped from time to time, yes. What a joy to play with. The Boone. As he referred to himself. He I was just saying, did you call him that or no. <laughs> I was gonna say that would be kind of awkward. Hey the boon. <laughs> Two balls, one strike to Walker. Watching him battle each row every day in BP for home runs. It was a joy. And each row won every day. Did he really? Every day. Fly ball to right field. Sizemore runs back toward the wall and it is off the top of the wall. Herrera is there to back it up. So Walker will get a double. You're right, Tom. The ball is flying tonight. Oh, it is. This is one of the first nights that it's really. It's really flying like we're in midsummer form. I mean, Neil goes down and gets this ball, but you know, it came off the bat, and the way his swing was, I just didn't think it was going to carry like that. I mean, that's close to getting out of here. Mercer hit one last inning off the end of the bat. They made it out to the track where Revere caught it and left. And that one didn't even sound good, but it still carried. McCutcheon walked his last time scored ahead of Marte's home run. Big hefty swing and it's 0 1. It is odd, you know, you look at uh, some of the hitters who are struggling around the National League, and McCutcheon was among this list about two weeks ago. Now, if you look at guys, everyday players who have at least 90 at bats in the National League, I mean, the names are, I mean, it's staggering. The ball, one strike. I mean, Chase's average, obviously, it is what it is. I mean, he's, you know, with 90 at bats, it's the lowest. But Jay Bruce hitting 167. Jay Roll hitting 171. Josh Harrison hitting 173. You skip past Chris Coglin because you know aside from his rookie year he's never been a player what he expected but then you have Jordy Mercer hitting 194 coming into this ball game and now at 189 I mean those are some recognizable names in the top 10 lowest batting averages in the National League and McCutcheon was there just a couple weeks ago very recognizable names and the only good thing about it being so early as you can if you do get on a hot streak you can raise that bump that average up. You just hope it's sooner rather than later. One two pitch to McCutcheon and he hits a foul. Well and then you look at this and that's why his numbers two weeks ago were surprising. Most valuable player awards for the Pirates is there with Bonds, Stargell, Parker, the great Roberto Clemente, Dick Grote. You can still listen to if you want to call basketball games for the University of Pittsburgh. Back to the olden days for both of those franchises. 
Roberto Clemente jersey to your left, Schmidt to your right. Two balls, two strikes. Strike three, McCutcheon won't argue that one. Four strikeouts for Jerome Williams. Two gone here in the fifth. This is just a, a, a cutter down the middle. And I think Chooch went out there to change up signs. I was watching Neil Walker on second base. He was looking like he knew the signs. Being a second baseman, he's going to be able to pick them up. And for Cuts to take a pitch that was Pretty much down the middle. I'm thinking he was Neil had the signs wrong, gave him to Kutch, and it wasn't what he was thinking. I mean that that pitch, and then Chooch goes out to the mound, discusses it with Jerome. Maybe they're switching up signs here. Were you the kind of guy that wanted signs? Signal to you from second base? Oh, like? absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. One. It just seemed funny to me. I could be completely wrong, but I'm watching Walker's mannerisms out there, the way he was turning his head. Well, that's what I was going to ask you because that's the only thing I can see is that he's not moving his hand, he's not doing anything with his fingers, but he is moving his head uh, obsessively. Like he just did it once. Yeah. The most universal from from runner to hitters, hands on, hands off, meaning your knees. Line drive to right field. Sizemore is there to put it away. Side is retired. No runs. One hit. One man left in scoring position. Middle of the fifth inning. The Phils with just one run. Try to get a little offense when we come back. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com for not only the rest of this series, but also that three game set against the D backs. We start the fifth for the Phillies. Cody Ashey, who has an infield hit, will lead it off. Takes a breaking ball, one ball, no strikes.
out to left field and that will drop for a base hit. So Ashley's two for two. That's got to make him feel pretty good. And you were asking about his socks. Yeah. They'll, they'll, be, be, up yeah, they'll be up tomorrow. Yeah, they'll be up tomorrow. He might not even take them off tonight. You know, this game is so much about team, team, team. But it's also about the individual and the individual helping the team. Couldn't agree more. Carlos Ruiz is the batter. Ruiz hit it to a double play his last time up. Andres Blanco has come out of the on deck circle to pinch hit. So Jerome Williams' night looks like it's done after five innings. Carlos takes inside one ball no strikes. Justin DeFreitas is firing in the pen. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard the Cubs are leading the Mets three nothing Chris Bryant Anthony Rizzo have gone back to back with home runs. That game's at the top of the second. Jacob DeGrom is on the mound for the Mets. He's already given up six home runs this year. Thirty four is on the mound for the Cubs. That's not a carry wood. You wouldn't think so. No. Left field bleachers are uh, open and operable. Fouls it. John Lester is number 34, of course. It was kind of eerie watching those games with the bleachers not. With the, uh, it wasn't even advertisements that were out there; were just pictures, right? They were just completely different. Two balls, two strikes to Ruiz. Try to check his swing. Did he go? Yes, says CB Buckner. He needs no help. Five strikeouts for Cole. And here comes Blanco. The slider. Hard slider. You wonder if everything's all right with Jerome. And I say that only because tomorrow Sean O'Sullivan is scheduled to start. Looks like he's fine. He's just in the dugout. Looks like this is just a decision to take him out because O'Sullivan's scheduled to start tomorrow. And the Phillies aren't too sure how far he can go because it is his first start back from that knee tendonitis. And yeah, it just it does seem like an early, early exit. Yeah, 85 pitches. Are, I mean, he was laboring. So Blanco hitting 250, 6 for 24. Lifts that one to shallow, or I should say the left center field. Nothing's really shallow tonight, and McCutcheon tracks it down. Two outs. And Ashley goes back to first. Innings, four hits, three runs. Two walks and four strikeouts, and again, 85 pitches. Jerome was such a nice guy. Oh. He's the best. You know, he could be upset about coming out of this ball game with 85 pitches. Obviously, go down and ask him right now. I'm sure he'd tell you, I'm going to go back out. But he could be sitting there and fuming and steaming, and his teammate just went out and pitched it for him, flew out, tapped him on the tail, you know, offered his support. That's what a great teammate does. Fastball right down the chute, one ball, one strike to Ben. 96 on that fastball. Garrett Cole is. Topped off was it 97 was the highest right? Yes. He's been in the 96 95 uh, neighborhood for most of the night. 
with that fastball at least. Pitch speeds tonight. His first seamer is ranged between 90 and 97. Slider 84 to 88. Not many curveballs though, right? No. Mostly with that slider. The one he just got two out with. Now this, this guy can pitch. He had the 2 0 count to create size more. That pitcher's at 92 that he grounded out on. And I'm not saying that's a BP fastball, but it's not the 96 97. As a hitter, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get it going. He knows that as well. Just took enough off to get him out in front. Yes, it was still 92, but when you're looking for 96 97, that's a big difference. Gosh, we talked about that at length yesterday with Bartolo Colon. Not that he's throwing 96, but we were talking about. Adding and subtracting on your fastball. Now he's doing it, you know, at a higher level, velocity-wise, than Bartolo. Runner goes two-two is pulled toward the right side. Walker gobbles it up, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, and one man left through five here in Philadelphia. It's the Pirates three and the Phillies. Dueling with Matt Harvey. Cole took the bat with confidence and kept Mets hitters off balance the entire night. His location was precise for seven solid innings, allowing just four hits and only one extra base hit. The Mets went down on strikes eight times, seven times swinging. Hamels bested the undefeated Harvey with 60% first pitch strikes. It is best performance of the season. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Cole was really good on Friday night. It's the only win the Phillies have so far in this homestand. They won game one of the series against the New York Mets. And now here in game four, they trail at three to one. Cole is scheduled to start Wednesday for the Phils. Justin DeFreitas will take over for the Phillies here in the top of the sixth inning. 14th ball game for Justin. No wins, no losses, an ERA of 2.76. Pedro Alvarez will be the leadoff hitter. Off the end of the bat. Boy, look at that. Galvis was played perfectly. That's why they're there. These scatter reports, they don't lie. <laughs> Jung Ho Kung. He's one for two, doubled. And it went back toward Williams his last time up. Takes outside, one ball, no strikes. I 
wonder what the biggest adjustment is for Kung from Korea to the major leagues. Now he played in the World Baseball Classic, so he saw major league talent when he played for Korea. But I wonder what the biggest adjustment would be for him coming over from the Korean professional baseball leagues. It's 100 percent the pitching. Has to be right. Yeah. I mean, you still have to catch it, throw it, and hit it. But the, these pitchers are. There's a reason they're in the big leagues. Because they're the best in the world. They're not the best in Korea. They're the best in the world. Now I think the style, the Korean pitching style, is similar to that of the Japanese professional leagues. You know, breaking balls, cutters, all that kind of stuff, change-ups. Hit him in the calf. And a one out base runner for the Pirates. Live now at the Phillies.com is the Phillies fantastic auction. Now the auction ends Wednesday and Thursday. We say both Wednesday and Thursday because there are two different parts to it, two different sections to it. So some end on the 13th, some on the 14th. And up for grabs now a round of golf for three with Hall of Famer Steve Carlton dinner party for eight with Hall of Famer Mike Schmidt in the Phillies executive dining room. Fantastic auction partners include WIP and WPHT and it benefits Phillies charities. Check it out now by going to Phillies.com. Here's Mercer he's 0 for 2. No balls one strike. Out of Justin, hit a batter, bounce back, next guy 0 2. It's also what you like to see there, Chutes. Singling for the slide step. The freight is doing the slide step and still getting his velocity up to 93. Yeah, I have to admit, I, I never knew that uh, the catcher signals for the slide step. I thought that was something that was always incorporated into the pitcher's repertoire that he did on his own all the time. For most pitchers, if they never had to do it, they'd be happy. Swing and a miss. Some high heat, 93. Two outs here in the sixth inning. Coming up at 11, Ben Revere shares how he stays relentlessly positive despite baseball's ups and downs, and why top prospect J.P. Crawford is back with a bang after an early season injury. Watch Philly's clubhouse presented by Mercedes-Benz tonight at 11, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. J.P. Crawford and the rest of the Blue Claws are idle tonight. They were scheduled to play uh, the Stone Crabs of Sh Port Charlotte. And the game was postponed because of food poisoning. I've never heard of that before. If it was a spread that they either got before BP or whatever, I, the whole team's eating it. Toss over to first. You ever had food poisoning? Uh, yeah. It's not fun. No. <laughs> Kung had started and then stopped, and DeFreda stepped off.
fly ball shallow left Revere started back now he comes sprinting in. Thankfully it was way up there and he makes the catch. Side is retired no runs no hits and one man left middle of the sixth. Brady Galvis will lead it off when we return. By Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. And by your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com today. To have a respiratory asthma awareness night, you see the, the gray hats that, that those two young ladies are wearing. Those hats were given out to all fans who came to Citizens Bank Park tonight. She's wearing two giveaways there. Opening night 2015. The return customer, Ben. The shirt and the lid. Never have enough baseball caps. I came home from Florida. And I. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Case in point there. Came home from Florida with a new ball cap. No, did you? And Megan says, another one? Yeah, I've stopped getting them. I just stopped because I have so many of them. One ball, no strikes to Galvis. What a run. What did this one have on it? It was uh, a golf hat. Okay. Golf hat. Two balls, one strike. You have to discard those hats pretty quickly after all the hair product that's on them. <laughs> I knew something was coming. <laughs> I refrained from my comment. You just threw that one right out there, didn't you? I did. Two and two. I think you have to go visit Tony pretty soon. That hair's getting out of control. Sure is. Just missed inside. Three balls and two strikes. Let's see Cole's reaction out on the mound. Chase Utley's on deck. That pitch looked to be identical to the one he rung Chase up on his last at bat. On the left field line, that'll be out of play. Spoiling some pitches here. Cole's only at 68 pitches. And we have nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The 
That was put foul down the right field line. Ooh, man. Watch your face. Folks are looking around for the baseball. Meanwhile, it's out toward Polanco in right field. In the ninth pitch of the at bat. And try the other side here. And he lays off and ball four. So Galvis draws a walk. Second walk issued by Cole. Not a great at bat or what? Really good at bat. That's a nine pitch at bat. We're getting up there later in the ball game. Yes, Cole still only has 70 pitches, but you make him work. Maybe he gets tired this inning. That might be just enough when you got the the heart of the Phillies lineup coming up. Well, Lee is 0 for 1. He struck out looking his last time. There's Deacon with the lefties due up for the Pirates. He'll probably come in to pitch. Breaking ball, and it's 0 and 1 to chase. And Bob Stumpo had a firecracker in that mitt down there. He was popping. <laughs> Well, watching Freddie down there first. That is a that is a, a textbook secondary lead. Very aggressive. Takes his two hops, gets out there, very aggressive. Thinking if, if something does get in the gap, he's going to be off to the races. Very nice to see. Broke his back, popped up behind second. And there's one out. Uh, that'll bring Ryan Howard up. Howard is one for two. Well, that's the kind of stuff that Cole has. I mean, that, that ball was just busted in. Uh, Chase up. Time for number seven here, Ryan. Yeah, this is only a two run deficit for the Phillies. The Phillies, though, have played, well, they've played a lot of uh, two run games where they, they've scored two runs or less, I should say. They've played 15 so far, not counting tonight. Now, when they score three runs or more, they're better than 500 team. And I guess that shouldn't come as a shock to anybody. But I think what's shocking are the number of games they've played where they've scored two runs or less. It's a lot at this point in the year. Easy trot back to the bag. This is why having guys on base when Ryan Howard comes to the plate is so important. Because you don't see the man playing rover out in shallow right center. It opens up a lot of green out there in right field for Ryan Howard. It's great. I mean, here you usually see. I mean, you usually see Neil Walker way out in right center field out in this area. Think about how much more green he has to work with now. Yeah, that ball he hit his first time up will easily be out in the outfield. Absolutely. You know, you start getting a couple guys on, and then there wouldn't be three on the right side. You'd have to defend against the steal. And that one got a piece of power, so he's hit by a pitch and right in the foot. And that'll put runners on first and second. So the tying run is over at first. And Grady Sizemore is coming up. Phillies offer family packs for select weekend dates here in 2015. Family pack is four tickets, four hot dogs, and four sodas for $100.
You can order your tickets by going to Phillies.com for the select family packs. Sizemore has an RBI tonight. It's the only RBI for the Phillies. Each team with four hits. The difference, though, is that one of the four hits for the Pirates is a home run by Polanco. Or I should say by Marte. Sizemore now eight for his last 21. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Chris Stewart, and it's one ball, one strike. So Garrett going a lot more breaking balls. He's lost a little bit of command of that fastball. He's able to get it in on Chase. But a few more off-speed pitches here. Fastball, but it's one and two. Garrett Cole was the number one rated high school player when he graduated, went to school in Southern California, and decided instead of signing a major league contract, professional contract, that he would go to UCLA. It didn't harm him at all because he was still the number one overall pick by the Pirates. Came to the big leagues pretty quickly. It's a very aggressive move on his part. I don't know how you can do it, honestly. How do you turn down that money? And you know you're banking on never getting an injury. But it worked for him. And you look at someone like my brother, for instance, drafting the 18th round out of high school, went to Vanderbilt. Ended up coming out of Vanderbilt after his junior as a first round. So conversely, you know, it, it works out. When How hard of a decision was that for him initially? It, it was fairly tough. There's a loop out toward left center field, and it's going to get for a base hit. It's kicked by Marte. Galvis will score, and the Phillies are within one. It's a 3 2 ball game. Second hit of the night for Grady Sizemore. I looked up at one moment. I realized, well, they outfielders are playing awfully deep, way deep. It might be a ball, Marte. In hindsight, thinking maybe he could have dove for this ball. I mean, that's a full head of steam if he lays out. Decided against it. Well, break for the Phils because they are able to score the run. It would have been a base hit anyway for Sizemore, but Galvis definitively scored. And it's a 3 2 game race. Searage out to give Garrett Cole a breather out of the mound. Nobody warming up for the Pirates. It's only 81 pitches for Cole. Not a big deal at all. And he's facing a struggling hitter in Odubel Herrera, who in his last six games is two for 22. Counting tonight with 13 strikeouts. That's where you know that he's really struggling. 13 strikeouts. Yeah, when it rains, it pours. You're not getting hits. And then you start not putting balls in play. I give Freddie now looking back at that at bat even more so. Yeah. Nine pitch at bat works the walk and the walk scores. Odubel well, for two tonight with two of those strikeouts we talked about. Swing and a miss and breaking ball. Third at bat, three straight first pitch swings. 
Well, and Cole probably understands that tendency. There's Galvis. Still catching his breath. In the dirt, and it's one and one. Every rookie goes through this. Nobody's hot for a full season. The league catches up to you, as they they say. That's a saying that we've heard time and time again. And you have to make those adjustments as the hitter. One ball, one strike to Herrera. Late on a 97 mile an hour fastball. It's one and two. It's 97 and it's got some run. But when you are struggling and striking out, you have to adjust pitch to pitch, not at bat to at bat. It's pitch to pitch. Got it on the inside corner. See that look in, in Garrett Cole's eye there. I, I, I don't care who you are, Tom. I don't care who you are. Like we talked about in the stat in the in the open. He's going to this fastball with two strikes. A because he command it, and B because it's 97. I don't care who you are. You're not going to hit that pitch. You, you physically cannot hit that pitch. Ashley chops it to first. Alvarez flips in time and Cole. Gets out of any additional jam here in the sixth inning. The Phillies do get one back and an RBI single by Grady Sizemore. We'll go to the seventh inning. Pirates up by one. Time now for your Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary. Grady Sizemore has both RBIs for the Phils on two singles. Garrett Cole's been really good as advertised. Four and one coming in. Pitcher of the month of the month of April. He has six strikeouts. He's allowed five hits and two earned runs. Marte's the difference, though, a three run home run against Jerome Williams, his eighth of the year. That was in the third. So now we go to the seventh, and Jake Diekman will take over. Diekman, 15th ball game. And he will face Cole to start things off. First pitch is in there, 0 and 1. Okay, Tom, let me know when I'm beating the dead horse, but he has two walks tonight. Both scored. Both scored. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> 0 
with two to Cole. have Garcia warming up but that's probably if it gets to Andrew McCutcheon in this inning. Oh two pitch got him. But after a 98 mile an hour fastball that's more like it for Deakman even though it was out of the strike zone. These lucky fans are tonight's Citizen 7. They were interested to a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple clear and personal and that's helping you bank better. This is back. Gregory Polanco is 0 for 2. He walked in the third. First pitch is over. It's 0 and 1. Okay, now it's the last thing I'll say. What? Five runs have been scored in this game. Yep. Four have scored that were walked. Right. Okay. I was, I was now gonna, I'm done. I was going to bring that up, but I figured that you would get to it. <laughs> you know, we always know that that walks are going to kill you, but I think because so many walks this year have really hurt the Phillies, it's accentuated even more. Over to third, Ashy tries to knock it down and handcuffed him, and that should be a base hit for Polanco. That ball got on him really fast. Well, it got on him and it just started to slice away. He just couldn't get his glove to the backhand. It just started to move to his right. And as a lefty, you're going to get that slight slicing action on the ball. Walker, the switch hitter, batting right handed, and first pitch is over. It's 0 and 1. Fastball has that hard riding action. Mm -hmm. When Jake was struggling early in the year, his ball was just seemed to flatten out that fastball. I and mean, that's bearing hard in on Neil Walker right there. And it's 96. I took a little off that, and it's three and one. Andrew McCutcheon on deck. This Sunday, fans 14 and under will receive the Cody Ashy Whipple Ball and Bat compliments of Sports for All. Phillies will wrap up the series with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. There's a little artistic rendering of the Whipple Ball and Bat. Cody's signature stamped on it. Runner goes, pitches pop foul. Play a lot of wiffle ball when you were a kid. Oh yeah, did you? Absolutely, absolutely, positively. Put the bat, cut the end out of it, put the wet newspaper in it, tape, duct tape it back up. You know, a lot of times we, I would just wrap it with a little electric tape, get it a little heavier, not even put anything in it. We would do that in these racket balls. 
I would use a racquetball with a stick ball bat. You'd get a a pull stick and you cut it off and then you put a little tape on the handle and that would be your nice that would be your bat plus that would help with your hand eye coordination yeah well it didn't really help but <laughs> it was fun 3 2 pitch runner goes pitches a oh man what was that pitch ball goes into center field it's a live ball even though it was ball 4 and that'll be an E2 on Carlos Ruiz Say that looked like a really good pitch. Uh, maybe a little low. The problem is too is that Walker walked in front of Ruiz. That may have impeded him somewhat, but Walker was heading to first base. It may have been a little low, but. It's been called a strike tonight. It absolutely has. Ryan Sandberg out to the mound. That's going to be it for Jake Diekman. So Luis Garcia is coming in. Rhino just asked uh, Carlos Ruiz, is that a good pitch? So a pitching change for the Phils. Tight spot for Luis Garcia when we return to Citizens Bank Park. Also provides a full selection of 3M safety products that can't be struck out. Who but W.B. Mason. Well, Jake Diekman's night is done, although the rudders on base are his responsibility. He'll check out with one man down. And Andrew McCutcheon coming up and Luis Garcia, the new pitcher. Luis was set up to try to turn to Garcia one and one one point eight eight earned run average. Got to keep this at a one run game. That's why these guys are in. That's why we were a little surprised yesterday when. Let's say Giles was not in the ball game and it was Jenmar Gomez. But Ryan Sandberg explained after the game that he didn't feel like. The moment. Called for Giles because they didn't have a lead. Giles and Papelbon, it, it seems that he treats differently, and a lot of managers do. They wait for a lead before they bring him in. It's, he's not the first one to do it that way. Out of play, and it's one ball, one strike. One ball, one strike. That looper out toward left. Here comes Revere. Makes the catch. Tagging from third is Polanco. The throw to the plate is not in time. 
And it's four to two in favor of the Pirates. So a sack fly for Andrew McCutcheon. Up to second base goes Neil Walker. Boy, he threw him a good pitch too. It's a slider. Cutch gets just enough of it out here to left field. Then came up, made a decent throw home. But with Polanco's wheels, that's not enough. Well, now Marte. Marte is homer tonight. He is one for three. Side one ball, no strikes. You know that play by Chooch throwing the ball in the center. Every catcher's done it. And you feel it crawling into a hole, but instinct tells you, leads you to believe. If you think it's a strike, you have to come up Absolutely. firing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you look at that pitch. Had every reason to believe it was a strike. Yeah, and we, you try not to get on the umpires too much because you, you, know, you could do that every single game if you want to. But that has been a strike in certain points tonight. Two balls, no strikes to Marte. And he drags it foul past the third base bag. Charlie Marte is bringing the lumber. Brought to you by Yellowwood Brand Pressure Treated Pine. This was his home run earlier in the game. Yeah, he gets a, a breaking ball, and we believe that was the first one he had thrown up until that point. He gets a hanging breaking ball, and it's a three-run homer. Brought to you by Yellowwood. Good pitch by Garcia. It evens the count two and two. Home run when an estimated 405 feet out to left center field. Little dribbler up the first base line. Garcia off the mound. Nice play. Great play. 1 3 on the put out. A run does score though on the sack fly by Andrew McCutcheon. Time to stretch here in Philadelphia with the Phillies down by two.
Predator Garrett Cole, who's still in the ball game. Darren Ruff has come out of the on deck circle, so he's going to pinch hit for Luis Garcia. Elvis Arajo is starting to warm up in the pen for the Phillies. There's Darren. Carlos is 0 for 2. He's grinded into a double play and he is struck out. First pitch is outside. One ball and no strikes. Now, if you think Chooch doesn't get on, do you think Ruff still hits? Boy, good question. Fly ball to center field. McCutcheon sprints back. He gets excellent jumps. He makes the catch. And the answer, Ben Davis, is no. No. One away. Cesar Hernandez is going to pitch it. Time for the Major League Notebook. Murph, is Kristen with you or are you uh, just doing this solo? Today? I'm going to do this part solo if that's okay. Yes, it is time for the Major League Notebook. And good news for the Cardinals. They confirmed today that Matt Carpenter is going to rejoin the team tomorrow on their road trip. It was kind of a scary couple of days for Matt Carpenter. He uh, suffered what they were calling extreme fatigue, but really it was some serious dehydration and a rapid heartbeat. But the doctors have checked him out. They say he's okay, so he's going to rejoin the team. Good news for them and certainly good news for their offense. And no surprise here, Bryce Harper, guys, the National League player of the week he went 10 for 22 he had six home runs and 13 RBIs in the week and the Nats were five and one in those games so Bryce Harper is your National League player of the week I don't think there was any competition this time around I would agree with you on that one Cesar Hernandez goes to center field and McCutcheon makes the catch so two outs yeah Bryce Harper had one of those weeks that uh, well every player just dreams of having I tend to think he's going to have more of those as his career moves on. Just 22 years old, you got to believe that uh, he's got a couple more in him before it's all said and done. I would think. Murph, do you remember 22? Do I remember 22? <laughs> <laughs> you remember last night, Murph? I mean, my 20s are kind of blurry, actually. <laughs> Pride of St. Joseph's University, Greg Murphy. Here's Ben Revere. No, no, honestly, I don't think I, any of us remember our 20s. I kind of do. <laughs> That's because you have video proof. <laughs> Ground ball through the hole on the right side for Revere. So a two out single. And Freddie Galvis is coming up. For the record, Tom, when I say they were blurry, it's just because they went by really fast. Right. That's that's what I meant by that. Oh, we knew that, Murph. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Galvis walked his last time. He's fly to center and he struck out. In the dirt, Stewart kicks it around, but it didn't go too far. Great play there by Stewart. 97 in the dirt it was never fun. Ever. Runner goes, pitches popped up. Second baseman Neil Walker is under. And the inning is over. No runs, one hit, and one man left for the Phillies. Seven in the books for Garrett Cole. Just an eight pitch inning. To see if he comes out when the Phillies bat the bottom of the inning.
come when you buy right and buy Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers at our most exciting lineup ever. ShopNissan.com. Fanatics got his electric guitar out on the dugout tonight. I still remember my Spanish teacher, Mr. Stewart. He said, Benjamin, toca la guitarra? <laughs> I see something like that. That's what I think of. Every time you see the fanatic with a guitar, that's what you think of. <laughs> that's what I think of. Here's Elvis Arajo in his fourth ball game since being summoned from Double A. Three innings, four strikeouts so far. Jared Hughes is throwing in the bullpen for the Pirates. First pitch to Alvarez is whacked towards center. Herrera comes in and dives. Did he make the catch? And he did. One away. Boy, he froze, danced a little bit, and then came running in to make the catch. Great play. Well, it's time now for our Hyundai defensive play of the game, and wouldn't you know it, it just happens. Unbelievable. First pitch out, he broke back. He was able to extend his glove just enough and get underneath it and make a phenomenal catch. Very good. Well, that's going to be the only batter that Araujo is going to face. That uh, highlight is brought to you by your local Delaware Valley or local Hyundai dealers. Delaware Valley Hyundai dealers. Araujo. Go grab out. an ice pack. <laughs> All that warming up for one. <laughs> Here comes Jen Margomez. How to nominate your extraordinary scholar. Two winners will be selected each month of the season to be honored on the field. You have to write an essay sharing how you are contributing to the common good through service. You must have a 3.0 or B average in order to qualify. No, well, Elvis Arajo came on to get Pedro Alvarez. And now they'll give way to Jen Mar Gomez. Pitch in yesterday's game. This will be his 13th ball game. Facing his former club. First pitch is inside. One ball, no strikes. Tied him up. One ball, one strike. It's one for two. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. Mm. 
Boy, this is one exaggerated leg kick. I mean, he gets it back. Wow. And then he holds it there. And that's what I'm saying. You have something that exaggerated. Getting your foot down in time. It's got to be a task. That time he didn't look like he even did it that much. No. And he was still late. He was still late. And he puts it down. I, I don't know. I mean, he's well tardy on that. But if you do something, I would think that, because you're doing the, the leg kick on every other pitch, I would think that would be the one that screws up your timing. Right. I agree with that. Your load is so important. When you don't do it consistently, you're not going to be on time. Well, his balance. Uh, it, Obviously, you know it better than I do, but his balance was way off on that swing. Way off. One ball and no strikes to Jordy Mercer. Mercer is 0 for 3. He's grounded out. He's flied to left. And he has struck out. He heads to the Phillies at the bottom of the eighth inning. Chase Sutley, Ryan Howard, Grady Sizemore. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire the opposition, 1 2 3. Which uh, maybe Gomez could do here for the first time tonight. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. One ball, one strike to Mercer. Popped him up. Left side, Galvis will call off Ashy. Inning is over. So the combination of Araujo and Gomez did their jobs. Phillies offense has a chance. Down by two. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning here in Philly. Jared Hughes will be the new pitcher. Rodriguez will bat ninth. Hughes may be used here for two innings. Mark Melanson has worked the last two ball games for the Pirates, their closer. He worked Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. And word was that they weren't sure if he was going to be totally available. Even though yesterday was kind of a quick outing for him. So we'll wait and see. Maybe the Phillies can take that off the table here in the bottom of the eighth inning. There's a lot of things you don't know about. Maybe he didn't throw that many pitches in the game, but he warmed up for a lengthy time in the bullpen. And you know, maybe the the top of the ninth took a while. And Lanson's been very good uh, over the last couple of years for the Pirates. This year he has two outings where he's allowed three runs. Uh, in both of those outings, hasn't allowed anything else during the season. Ooh, man, look out, Coconut. How did he get out of the way of that? Good night.
Usually Chase will just kind of turn and take it, but not there. When it's at your squash. Out of play, and it's one ball, two strikes to Chase Utley. Foul ball. Phillies were trailing after seven this year, one and nineteen. Well, they trail after eight innings. They're zero and nineteen. Well, here, we're not quite at that point. One-two pitch in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. It for Chase. So the tying run will come to the plate in Ryan Howard. Here at the bottom of the eighth inning. Now I don't know if that'll lead to anything, and hopefully it does for Chase Utley, but I saw a couple good takes there. The pitch before that was a back foot slider that he spit on. Which means he's recognizing that pitch. Takes a fastball down and away, lays it in the left. Doesn't hit that hard, but it's a hit. And, and now, he, yeah, now he's hitting three straight. Howard fouls it at the plate, 0 and 1. They also saw that good balance, which I alluded to earlier in the game. As much gas coming out of Jared Hughes as there was Garrett Cole. It's a difference of, you know, maybe three or four miles per hour. It doesn't look nearly as heavy either. No. No balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. He got it with a breaking ball. So three pitches. Howard struck out. And that will bring Grady Sizemore as the two RBIs for the Phillies tonight to the plate. Back foot breaking ball. And that pitch is tough when you see a fastball inside. You think you have to be quick to get to it. Comes out of the same slot. And then it just breaks. Chopper back toward the middle. Walker has it. Tags Utley. Throws to first. Double play. 4 3 double play. Phillies are retired here in the eighth. No runs. One hit. And nobody runs. So the ninth inning we go with the Phillies down 4 to 2.
Only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Four to two, Phillies trail it as we go to the top of the ninth inning. And the leadoff batter is Chris Stewart for the Pirates. Stewart Rodriguez at the top of the order. First pitch is inside. One no. Phillies at the Pirates will be back at it again tomorrow night at 7.05. AJ Burnett will face Sean O'Sullivan. And that one is whacked foul. Well, there is Melanson, so our question is answered as to whether he is available tonight. He just fired one right past the bullpen catcher, and you know, obviously the fans are out there sitting above him watching. And I heard somebody say, Well, you better not throw it like that when you go in there in the next inning. That always got him. <laughs> uh, back towards second base, it's a little floater. And a base hit for Stewart. He shattered his bat on it. But that's his second hit of the night. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Reds are leading the Braves 1-0. The Braves coming off a three-game sweep at the hands of the Washington Nationals, who are leading Arizona as we speak. Here's Sean Rodriguez, 13 for 32 on the year. Runner goes, pitches walloped. Foul. As we mentioned, the Phillies and the Pirates tomorrow, 7 o'clock on Comcast Sportsnet. The 0 1 pitch coming to Rodriguez. Out towards short. This should be two. Galvis will take it himself. And a double play. Two away here in the ninth. And to the top of the order for Gregory Polanco. He's a very good sinker tonight out of, Go out of uh, Gomez. Yeah, a lot of times they say with a sinker ball pitcher that. If he works enough, it's better for him. If he works, yeah, you still see that velocity there, 92, 93. Yeah. Really got in on Stewart. Broken bat, did get a single, but I mean, I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of sink. Getting the lateral movement and the depth on that, what you want to see. That one more lateral. Polanco reached on an infield hit his last time up off the glove of Cody Ashi over third. Mm. One ball, one strike.
through the hole on the right side. And Polanco has his second hit. He's been on base three times. And a two out single here in the ninth inning. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Nationals leading the Diamondbacks 1 0 in the top of the first. Max Scherzer against Josh Colmenter. Denard Spann led off the game with a home run for the Nationals. Nationals are closing on the Mets. The Mets are trailing tonight to the Chicago Cubs 4 to 1. They came into tonight's ball game three and a half ahead of Washington, five and a half ahead of the Marlins. Outside, one and two. Blanco scored when he was on bases last time. He was off and running when Walker took ball four. And then the throw it into center field. He went to third and scored on McCutcheon's sack fly. That's a big run right now because the Pirates lead it by two. With their closer Melanson warming up in the bullpen. Anytime you can add that insurance run, I mean it's it's big. They also have Archimedes Caminero warming as well in case this gets out of a safe situation. Two balls, no strikes to Walker. Something soft. It's two and one. Geared up for the fastball. Two oh change up. Maybe his last batter, Dustin McGowan, is warming up in the bullpen. They may decide to make a change if this guy right here gets up. There's McGowan. Giles was up a little while ago. Kenny looked really enthused right there, didn't he? <laughs> Runner goes, pitch is fouled. It's three and two. So Polanco will go back to first and he'll be off on this next pitch definitively. Ryan Howard will play behind Polanco here. With a lefty up. Just want to keep any ball from going down that line. Just give Ryan a little bit more time to get to it. If he's able to. Goes, pitch is hit out toward left field. Revere goes back, he's under it. And we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. So, last chance for the Phils. For the Pirates in their half of the ninth, no runs, two hits, one man left. Phillies trail it by two. Herrera will lead it off when we come back.
Not for our WB Mason delivery of the game. All right, well, this is still the biggest factor in this game. Hanging breaking ball from Jerome Williams. Starling Marte. Not Starling Marte. He plays for the Cubs. Marte puts a charge into it for a three run homer, which is still the difference and the WB Mason delivery of the game. Yeah, Marte's home run continued his hot hitting here at Citizens Bank Park. Eight home runs, 24 runs batted in. So now Melanson, seven saves and eight opportunities. Nine strikeouts at 14 and a third. And he will face Odubel Herrera to start it off. This will be the third straight day that Melanson is coming in in a save situation. Odubel's 0 for 3. He struck out three times. Is over. It's 0 and 1. <laughs> 0 and 2. Well, Lancet has been with the Astros, the the Red Sox, the Yankees. And now the Pirates. It's with the Pirates, though, is where he's really come of age. Jason Grilly went down a couple of years ago. He assumed the closer's role and hasn't looked back. Throws him another breaking pitch. You don't see many relievers going out of the windup. Most guys coming in, coming in with runners on base, are always out of the stretch. So they just stick with the stretch despite. No runners being on. No Dubal stays alive. Toyota Major League scoreboard. Ryan Zimmerman is in a three run home run. So now it's 4 0 Washington. That game's still in the first. The ball, it does jump out in Arizona. Him down and in all night. Mm. We saw Udu will do that against the Red Sox in the first series of the year. Yeah, and then he was out the next couple of days. That's right. Couple games. Seen the big overhand breaking ball out of him yet? Big 12-6. There's not a guy's lot of not a lot of guys throw anymore. You can see it here. In the air to right field. Going back on it is Polanco. It is gone. First major league home run for a double Herrera, and he's made it a one-run game. Oh, for his last 12. Oh, for his last 12, no more. Yeah, I got Somebody's got to get that ball for him. Boy, that couldn't have come at a better time for this young man. Nice, easy swing. That made a winner out of Ann Morris in a McDonald's home run jackpot. And has just won 100 bucks. Now Cody Ashey. Ashey takes a strike. 0 and 1. There is that home run ball. 
pirate fan that caught it, a Philly fan that's got it now. Inside, one ball, one strike. Well, the usher is currently walking down the steps. And I would imagine he's going to make a left here in a second. Out towards center field, McCutcheon is there. And he makes the catch. Hey. You want to make a trade? Boy, do I have a deal for you. Get you an autographed bat, autographed baseball, and if you give me that one back. Can you remember what you traded for your first home run? I don't know. I really don't remember. Carlos Ruiz is 0 for 3. First pitch is low, one ball, no strikes. It was someone from the Padres, though. They made the the deal. Something with Tony Gwynn on it. From what I understand, John Morris, who was the owner at the time, went into the stands in Anaheim and got the ball. Really? That was the rumor. And we've never seen that person again. And the line drive face hits the center field. So that means the tying runs aboard, and now Darren Ruff will pinch in. The problem with using Blanco and Hernandez early in the game is now you can't pinch run for Chooch. The Chooch isn't the fleetest of foot, but yeah, you've got Frank Core. You could use a pitcher, but yeah, they've but tried that before. It got dicey. Remember what Cliff Lee was pinch running a couple times? Yeah, Poor Cliff. <laughs> so now Ruff is up. Coming Yarrow is going to start the throw again for the Pirates. Rough pitch hitting here, hitting 191. Lays off, one ball, no strikes. Phillies 0 and 19 when trailing after eight. They are due. Louise, a very short lead off first. Two balls, no strikes. Well, getting back to that home run by Oduble, he kept pounding with those cutters in, cutters in, fouls the ball off his foot, and then he throws him a breaking ball. You know, I could not be happy for that man right there, but I'm just wondering what Stewart was thinking, what Melanson was thinking. Until he proves that he can hit that cutter, why throw him anything else? Off the end of the bat. And Darren Ruff just fouled one of those cutters off. It's two and one. But I'm glad he did throw him that breaking ball. Come on, Darren, leave him standing out there. A floater out toward right, and it'll be caught. By Polanco. Uh, there are two outs. Boy, Polanco and Marte, they are gliders. Long legs, great jumps, and they cover a lot of ground. And that wasn't the hardest play in the world right there. But you see how fast he got to it? Closing speed. They definitely have the close closing speed out there. That ball kind of stayed up in the in the air a little bit, but All right, last chance now. Ben Revere is the batter. Revere one for four. He can get one of those curveballs that he can golf out of here. Fly ball center field. This should do it. McCutcheon's under it. And the Phillies have lost their third consecutive game. They lose tonight by a final score of four to three to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mark Melanson does give up a run. On the home run by Adubel Herrera, they leave the tying run on board, but that's it. He's able to record his eighth save 
of the season. There's Herrera's first major league home run. Our Chevrolet player of the game. Well, this guy was outstanding tonight for the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's Garrett Cole. He was good. Only two runs he gave up were the two walks that he had. But he had six strikeouts and used his fastball very effectively. He was able to get the strikeouts when he needed it. Mixing a few breaking balls, but he pretty much did it with that four seamer and the two seamer. And because of that, he is our Chevrolet player of the game. And his fastball, we talked about during the open, it was as advertised where it can get to 97 and overpower the hitter. So the Pirates take game one of this four game series, four to three. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this.